Very well run properties. Uh, if you've been to one, you know that. Very well run properties. To no surprise, Donald Trump is a cheat. You likely saw our previous video outlining the claims made against the commander in chief, Rick Riley's new book illustrating how golf explains Trump. Here's what we found. I can still remember Pele. Yes, Pele. Renowned as one of, if not the best soccer players of all time, he and Trump have a similarity. They both kick balls just differing sports. You know, he kicks the ball out of the rough so many times, the caddies call him Pele. It's true. As it is written in the book to his interview on CNN, Riley writes, he kicks the ball out of the rough so many times, the caddies call him Pele. You're a phony. Hey, this guy's a great big phony. Chippins are a nag. The sense of being oh so frustratingly close to the green, they're difficult shots and never insignificant in a round of golf. For Donald Trump, they're like game six of Michael Jordan, a gimme. He took a gimme chip in with me. We're playing a bet. I'm in there for a par, five. He's off the green in four. He says, I guess that makes this good. He hasn't even got to the green. I said, did you just take a gimme chip in? Well, yeah, I'd have made that. It's absurd. Stupid is stupid does, Mr. Blue. Make sure you write that I play my first ball. You don't get a second ball in life. Trump would tell Riley. Another lie. Fool me once. Shame on. Shame on you. If fool me, we can't get fooled again. You probably know Mike Tirico. Good evening, everyone. Mike Tirico. Fantastic sportscaster. Chalmers. Oh, James! Whoa! Another label? Victim to Donald Trump's cheating. As Golf Digest writes, Tirico hit what he thought was the shot of his life into a par five, only to find his ball in a sand trap. After the round, Tirico discovered how it got there. After the round via Tirico himself, Trump's caddy came up to me and said, you know that shot you hit on the par five? It was about 10 feet from the hole. Trump threw it in the bunker. I watched him do it. Oh my God, stop lying. Then there's his handicap claiming to boast a 2.8. For reference, winner of 18 majors, Jack Nicklaus is a 3.4. Riley goes further. Everybody that's played with him, the pros, D, uh, Dustin Johnson, they all say he's about a nine or 10. He's a 2.8, but it's taken him eight years to get the 20 scores, so he's just cherry picking. He can't cover a 2.8, no way. Shame, shame. Then there's the story of Andrew Tessero, who designed the clubhouse at Trump Westchester, was owed more than $141,000. Riley and Golf Digest printed the small sum. In that end, he received just 25 grand. A man who claims to be worth billions and billions and billions and billions. Screws an architect, his family, and his own firm out of money. But there's more. He failed to pay overtime to waiters and staff at Doral anywhere from $800 to $3,000 each, as well as a painter. Trump is a man-child. He holds grudges. See examples of John McCain, the National Football League, the list goes on. Astonishingly, when Trump failed to act swiftly in aiding Puerto Rico, the book cites his personal grudge. The president's Trump International, now known as Coco Beach Golf and Country Club, went bankrupt in 2015 that left Puerto Rico with a $33 million hole. The fractured relationship between Trump and the island, Riley claims, partially explains the delayed response by the U.S. government after the hurricane's aftermath left Americans dying for water, medicine, and power. Whether it's Vietnam, numerous spouses, cheating the American people out of insulin, cheating as charities for personal gain, cheating is not a way of life. It is his life. He's cheated to the point Lance Armstrong, Tim Donahue, Sammy Sosa's cork bat, and Diego Maradona's hand are like, whoa, this guy's f***ed up. Stop being played. Let's play the ball as it lies in 2020. If you'd like to hear more thought-provoking content like TYT Sports on Facebook and to help in my journey to keep media independent, go to tyt.com slash Rick.